So James is issuing a challenge of restraint or thoughtfulness before beginning to speak. Here it is in Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1. Walk prudently when you go to the house of God and draw near to hear. Hear that? When you go to the church, draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they do not know that they do evil. Do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. So slow to speak is a challenge. Here's what it really means. Why don't you slow down, let God speak in your life, think about it, and be very slow to respond. So our natural tendency in respect to God's Word is to be slow to hear and quick to speak. And not fully understanding because of faulty listening, we can be quick to jump to the wrong conclusions, quick to judge, quick to say the worst, and quick to offer advice. Did you know that James, further on in the writings of James, he ties the tongue and its control to spiritual maturity? He says in James 3, 2, For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a mature man, perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. He said if you can get control of your tongue, you can control every member of your body. James 3, 8, But no man can tame the tongue. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. What he's trying to remind us is that you can't do it. The control speaks of God being the source of control. Number three, he says, be slow to speak, be swift to hear, and calm your temper. He's going to give us the rule as to why we should calm our temper and the reason. The rule is be slow to wrath. What word is he using there? It's a word that does not refer to an explosive outburst of temper, but rather an inner Deep resentment that smolters often unnoticed by others. What it means is, every time you hear, instead of really listening and believing God can speak into your life, you constantly put up a defense and your own, in, in, your own artillery against the Bible. So in this text, it is an anger toward the word of truth. That's literally the context in which it's taught. The word that displeases. It's like a person goes to a church and the preacher gets up and he deals with a text and it confronts your personal sin. It's a conflict with your cherished personal belief or standard of behavior. And it refers to a disposition that's hostile to scriptural truth when it does not correspond to your own convictions. And it can be against the one who faithfully taught it. So oftentimes a person is angry and here's what they do. They say, I'm not going back to that church. They either don't go anywhere or they say, I'm going to find me another church. And what you do, you try to find a preacher who preaches more of a belief system that, listen to this, that will accommodate your behavior. 